There's been a lot of talk about a civil war in the world of rap, as tensions have risen between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. But neither of these artists can compare to the greatest gift music has ever seen. A rapper who is so unique that he makes your eardrums hurt. Who despite challenging the internet with highly questionable songs, has managed to capture a modern audience of over 800,000 listeners. Good gravy. And it's easy to see why. Shout out to the dinosaurs. Shout out all the raptors. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, shout out to you. And shout out the whole Rex of Pterosaurus. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, cuz you f sweet. Shout out to my bed, cuz it's keeping on the sheets. And shout out to the Herbivorosaurus. Oh, 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 oh. You know, Miles went from being kicked out of his own house and not being able to record anywhere to being featured on late night TV. I'm not making that up. His music was actually featured on Jimmy Fallon. He might not have the best production, but he's definitely a visionary, a voice of a generation. The man who sampled a crinkling bag is now pushing a million monthly listeners on Spotify and everyone else in the rap world they're sweating, watching his numbers grow, while no matter what they do, they can't seem to get the same type of attention. Here's that song with the bag, by the way. This is sound of a bag. I'm on Snapchat, I'm getting money. I get racks just like a crab. Came from the bottom, now I'm at the top. This is the sound of a robot. <laughs> Most of You Know Miles' past is pretty mysterious, as he's only done one real interview. What we do know is that he started off as a pizza delivery man, earning $6 an hour. From an early age, he took an interest in acting and doing impressions of Looney Tunes characters, doing impressions of Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, and Taz, showing an inclination for dark and serious characters. Despite being one of the most accomplished rappers alive, back before he started, You Know Miles didn't really listen to rap at all. Instead, he enjoyed listening to rock and emo, specifically bands like Panic at the Disco and Blink-182. It would not be until 2010, during the Drake and Lil Wayne era, that he would get into the genre, describing the rap made at this time as perfected. And from then on, his career as an artist would begin. And the internet had no idea what they were in for. Here's the first song I could find posted on his YouTube. This ain't Pokemon, but I feel like ass catch him. He looking for the Dragon Balls, he won't even find them. Yo girl so ugly, I dodged her like the Matrix. I got my ass by on the Matrix. I just stole away on the alien spaceship. I threw away the sandwich because it had mayonnaise on it. As you can see, the song is a little bit rough around the edges, but it is clearly the workings of a young genius. It has a couple flaws here and there. The music theory doesn't quite line up, but with its eloquent use of noise, it's a great start. The profile of an average Uno Miles masterpiece contains these elements. Falsetto singing, poetic lyrics, and an affinity for threatening his grandma and the WWE. I'm in the WWE, don't f with me. If I see Randy Orton, I'll beat the f out dog. i knock the f out dog. i send the f out dog. i beat the f as he continued his journey, you know Miles would quickly improve with tracks such as Cheeseburger Deluxe, a bit of an earlier acquired taste again, but for those of us with more mature palates, this is music. I just ordered a Cheeseburger Deluxe, waiting in line on my Cheeseburger Deluxe, holding up the line for a Cheeseburger Deluxe, just bought some fries with my Cheeseburger Deluxe. Got something to drink with my cheeseburger deluxe. A couple of Uno Miles' songs are named after civil rights activists and leaders, but besides that, there is no pattern to his mad- I, I mean genius. The evolution of his songs, in my opinion, would start with another song called Mario. Forty-eight on the beat. I'm scared of water like a cat. I'm in a cave like a bat. In the sewer like a rat. Meow, meow, kitty cat. Many of Uno Miles' songs would be inspired by real life events, such as Dookie on My Shoe, which was conceived after he stepped on Dog Dookie, or Pirates on a Boat, which was made after he quote watched 400 episodes of One Piece. Despite how highly many of Uno Miles' songs are held today, it would be years before he would see any sort of recognition. In the process of trying to perfect his craft, he would be kicked out of multiple studios, including his own house by his own mother. Apparently, after being kicked out of a particular studio, the sound engineer that he worked with told him to not come back. I bet that sound engineer is feeling all types of regret right now. Oof, wouldn't want to be him. For some reason, nobody wanted Uno Miles to record in their studio. It was as if the way he sang was just too ahead of its time. It was like painful to listen to, but not like in a bad way, but like in a way where, you know, it's like trying to lift up a really big weight, you know, if you can't do it yet, you know, it's it's gonna hurt to listen to such good music. But even though his talent continued to go underappreciated, 
you know Miles would continue to create and upload dozens of songs. During his campaign to be noticed, one of his top priorities was advertising himself on TikTok. And this is probably the number one reason why he was found. Miles used the meta strategy of making fun of himself in third person, posting himself with captions like, my grandson not making it and who let him in the studio again. This is actually a really smart strategy that Miles was unironically ahead of the game on. Like real talk, because he marketed himself in third person, people were more likely to watch because they saw the advertisement as more of an authentic fan post. You know, Miles would continue to gift the world with music and brilliant advertisement up until his first big break with the rise of two of his most prolific songs, Road to Riches and Money in the Bag. These songs were smash hits with a combined 6 million listens on Spotify. And as you you can see this is where Miles' voice acting background really shined. I feel like Charlie Brown, except I ain't brown. I'm green. This is the sound of a lottery machine. <laughs> you know, Miles would then enter a renaissance, a good renaissance, with tracks like Indiana Jones, Four Wheeler, and Negative Riz being songs that will all go down in history as music. Rolling out hit after hit, you know, Miles cultivated a passionate fan base, which he admits to low key being scared of. According to you know, Miles, Fame wasn't all sunshine and roses, as many new problems would find him. Specifically weird people who would try to leak his music video locations, and then wait around and try to meet him, as if he'd want to meet somebody who was like stalking him. You know Miles would respond to this by avoiding the leaked locations, and continuing to drop banger songs just in different places. He would also now be harassed by particularly aggressive fans. One time he posted an innocent offering of $20 for a feature of him on your song. He just wanted to see if he could charge some money for his voice. But when some fans found out about this offer, they started demanding that he pay them $20 for him to be featured on their songs. As if You Know Miles' music was so bad that anyone who associated with him deserved compensation. The pushback was so bad that You Know Miles took the offer down, but would continue to be sent screenshots of it for weeks. He couldn't escape what he had done, punished just for the idea of offering his voice to a different song. You know Miles had some people who got a little bit too excited about his music, but he continued to push forward, dropping the brilliant Frederick Douglass in the midst of everything. Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass, hey, hey, Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass, Douglass, Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass. Douglass. Frederick Douglass. Douglass. Frederick Douglass. The ripples you know Miles and his supporters were making did not go unnoticed. He would get an opportunity to give his first major interview with none other than Anthony Fantano himself. During their interview, Fantano would be shocked to find out about the surprisingly modest setup that you know Miles had. He had expected him to use a state-of-the-art studio with synths and a $20,000 mixing board. How else could he be making such fire songs? You know Miles' answer was shocking, as he had claimed he had only recently upgraded from a $10 mic to a now $60 mic, and had somehow made most of these amazing songs on a $100 computer. Take that, Steve Lacey. This is the new modern budget producer. A month after his interview in February 2024, You Know Miles would achieve his biggest milestone yet, when another legend of the music industry would notice him. The man on the cover of High Tier Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream, Jimmy. Fallon. Now, Jimmy didn't have You Know Miles on his show, probably because You Know Miles was too busy, but he did want to play his music for his audience, clearly enamored with its beauty. But then when he played the music, something strange happened. Everyone started laughing, including Jimmy. It's like everybody thought that You Know Miles' music was a big joke. How how do they, how are they laughing at it? It's a am it's amazing music. I changed my mind. This is low tier ice cream. The, the cookie dough totally melts into the rest. Of it. it ruins the consistency. Now there were many ways that you know Miles could have responded to this. If he wanted to, he could have rightfully dropped a diss track that would have ruined Jimmy Fallon's career. But instead, Miles proved to have incredible character by choosing to not only be talented but also one of the most gracious artists ever. He extended the olive branch by making a much more forgiving song called Jimmy Fallon. Go tell Jimmy Fallon, I said thank you. Go tell Jimmy Fallon, I said thank you. Go tell Jimmy Fallon, brick wall. <laughs> Go tell Jimmy Fallon, you know Miles hit baked beans, <laughs> working beans. I just called Jimmy Fallon and said salad dressing. I just called Jimmy Fallon and said brick onion. But that's not even the most exciting part about his progress in 2024, because in the same month, Miles would drop footage of one of his first live shows, an event that had been mildly anticipated for years. According to Miles, he wanted his shows to evoke the same energy as the Looney Tunes that he once imitated, and that kind of explains a lot about how the show went. Miles arrived to the show surrounded by an entourage, and as fans called to him, he entered backstage. 
Then he put on a top hat to represent his song Abraham Lincoln, and then he appeared for a song or two to a crowd way bigger than I think anyone expected. Before dissing the venue and getting those same fans to basically chant that the place they're at sucks. Then Unomaus pranked the audience by secretly abandoning the show and live streaming from the outside of it. Man, he started taunting on? them like a super villain on like Instagram hey, Live or something, so making well, fun man. of them as if they were trapped inside. Then he went back into the venue and somebody got smacked. I don't know how long it's been in the show by this point. Somebody gets a cheeseburger from the stage. You know, Miles brings out a decoy of himself, a I don't know why he just doesn't want to sing. <laughs> Apparently the decoy worked, and in the midst of all of this chaos, somehow everybody knows the lyrics to all of the songs. According to one comment on the video, it apparently took four and a half hours for Uno Miles to get up and actually perform the set list. Now this was probably one of the most impressive live shows that I think any of us have ever seen. I mean the theatrics, the high level concepts, the energetic performance. This was truly a show that no refunds would be given for because no one would obviously be asking for a refund. It's too good. In March of 2024, Uno Miles dropped John Cena Weird, continuing his beef with the WWE organization, as well as the collaborative song Phineas and Ferb, which does not mention Phineas or Ferb a single time in the lyrics. By now, you're probably fully convinced that Uno Miles is purely a comedic rapper. But would you believe me if I told you that there was more to him than screaming like a turkey? You see, throughout his illustrious career, Uno Miles has also tried to make serious music. Very recent to this video's release, an additional pair of good sound songs were also released this month called Control Me and Like What, both of which feature Ice Spice on their thumbnails. The songs have a distinct lack of gobbling and are almost unrecognizable from the Uno Miles that most people know. So how did his cult-like following respond to these new songs? A lot of comments on these videos are straight up supportive. Why is this actually so fired? WTF. Bro actually making music. Dude, if this is the direction your music is going, I'm 10 million percent here for it. He's finna pull a Joji. <laughs> While a lot of them are roasting him for how bad his attempt at good music is. But I don't think that these hate comments are going to deter you know Miles at all, because most of his marketing and brand was based around trying to get people to make fun of him. But there's one more thing. Recently, Kendrick Lamar did drop some bars dissing J. Cole and Drake, where he basically told them that they weren't on his level. And people have been attributing this to a civil war in the music industry. But despite how many waves he's making, neither side has yet to mention You Know Miles. This leads me to believe that his music is so sensational that everyone else is too afraid to even get close to him or his fanbase, solidifying him as one of the greatest rappers of all time. When asked about his persona, You Know Miles says that he's playing himself but cranked up a notch, which is a strategy that I keep on seeing in viral people. I've already inadvertently made two videos on people who are playing themselves, but at a higher character, so maybe I gotta do it too. The lesson here is that sometimes making fun of yourself is the secret to top tier marketing, as well as a consistent output of content. I mean, you can just say that Uno Miles was carried by being trash, but he is trash a lot. He is trash more often than your garbage can gets picked up more Uno Miles makes more music than that. This guy is constantly releasing new songs and skits. As much as someone can call Uno Miles a horrible singer, he is a marketing genius. I mean, jokes aside, this is the dream. Miles was able to build a fan base up through consistently making content that people liked and is now trying to aim even higher by making more legitimate songs. If you like this video, drop a sub. Thanks for watching. I'm Lufa.